This is Marketing Jam, a show featuring the brightest minds in marketing. Let's talk about SEO quickly, this whole search engine optimization thing. People are frustrated by it, confused by it, and there are so many SEO tools out there. Free ones, subscription ones, which one's the best? Do you ever feel like it's been this dark art, this mystic craft hidden for only certain people to understand? Well, here at Jelly, it all became clear when we started using Ahrefs. The reports we got, the clarity on site ranking, and so much more. Today, for all our clients, we provide Ahrefs reporting and use the tool to audit sites. It's the premier SEO tool that gives you the confidence you're providing top-notch reports and data to your clients. Let the only confusing thing be how the tool's name is said. Check them out at ahrefs.com. All right, everyone, thanks for joining us for another week of Marketing Jam. I am so very excited. Uh, you might even be listening to this from the comfort of your bed or maybe the discomfort of your bed, and you're wondering where and how can I get a new mattress? Uh, what could this look like? How can I be more comfortable? How can I sleep better? Uh, well, Sarah is going to tell us all about what it looks like to market, market said product, these mattresses. And you probably, probably already have seen an ND ad um, maybe you've seen their competitors' ads, uh, but we're going to dive into what does that look like for her, and even the very exciting news for uh, Canadian startups and Canadian companies uh, seeing ND being acquired by Sleep Country Canada. Duh. <laughs> Why am I a mattress anywhere else? All right, Sarah, thank you for being hey. here. Hey, Darian. There's so much to talk about. We're going to have a lot of fun. So much to talk about. Um, why don't we start with um, maybe when you started with the company and and kind of what the journey was like and, and the acquisition and maybe what it's like now being with uh, being with Endy. Yeah, for sure. It's been a wild ride. Um, I joined in the summer of 2017. Previously, I was at Indigo on their PR team. And, um, you know, I started talking with this at the, at the time, fairly little known mattress company called Endy that had these big dreams to mm -hmm. dominate e-commerce in Canada. And I just fell in love with the mission. I really resonated with the founders. Um, and I just thought it would be an amazing next step. Mm -hmm. And when I told my parents that I was moving from Indigo, this storied Canadian brand, which still mm -hmm. is, holds a very big piece of my yes. heart, and jumping ship to Endy, which is a brand they had never heard of, um, they they asked me if I was feeling okay, <laughs> if this is if I was sure about this decision. Mm -hmm. I'm like, trust me, guys, this is going to be big. I promise you. Mm. Um, and lo and behold, we've grown in the past, you know, well, five years since founding, but three years and a bit since I joined to become the leading online mattress mm. brand in Canada and arguably the biggest D 2 C brand in Canada as well, um, or at least the biggest online retailer that only ships here in Canada, you really haven't seen mm. growth like we've experienced. So it's been a pretty awesome ride. I, I don't regret the move one mm -hmm. bit. Um, mm. And I think I think you'd even have my parents on my side at this point, too. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. And, and those that are on the West Coast um, chapters Indigo, kind of the, the book slash retailer, which again, surprisingly was showing up on my skip the dishes. Ooh, was very or, cool. or one of those uh, food delivery things, uh, offering delivery of such uh, gifting and food products. Nice. Tis the season. Yeah. Tis is the season. Yes, yes. It is a very, it is the place to go to for all those great knickknacks and Christmas gifts, books, or yep. uh, giftware galore. But um, joining the company and, and being in a startup mode, right? It was, it was two founders and yep. very eager, very excited. We've had one of them on the show before, which is uh, if you look in the archives of Marketing Jam. Um, what was it like in that period of kind of marketing for a startup kind of brand and then going to working for a sub brand of Sleep Country with the acquisition? Yeah. It was exciting. I joined um, as the, the head of their influencer marketing program, which they had dabbled in before, but hadn't fully invested in. And they recognized that there was really no way to measure the success of this program because yeah. influencer was just so new. It was such a yeah. wild, wild west. And in many yeah. ways, it still is for the influencer marketers that are listening. Um, and they wanted, but they knew that it worked. They couldn't figure out exactly how much. They couldn't figure out why, but they knew 100% that it worked and that it was a worthwhile investment. So they brought me on to really grow out the, por the portfolio. Um, and within you know six months, I was leading the, the PR strategy as well. 
um, and then moved into sort of more of a content communications general marketing role. Mm -hmm. um, but the the core when I started was influencer and still, I mean, compared to other companies, influencer has is a huge, huge, huge part of what we do as a marketing team uh, in general. We've kept it in house. It's a huge part of our success. Um, I think all of us at every level of the organization, we credit our success on, on a few key things. Mm. You know, being customer obsessed is definitely one mm. of them. Um, but also getting amazing PR and having these amazing advocates coast to coast to help tell our brand story has been crucial for us. It's been a really big differentiator. Um, so that was core to our story. It was a huge part of our growth story. Um, and it still continues to be. So in, as you mentioned, in 28, well, you didn't say the year, but in 2018, um, Sleep Country purchased us. Mm. Uh, but we continue to operate autonomously. Mm. So they sort of saw what we were doing in the online space. Yeah. Uh, they, we really resonated with them being this proud Canadian company who, yeah. you know, really dominated in specialty retail uh, in the mattress category here in Canada. Um, and they saw us as sort of uh, a potential amazing partner for yeah. growing their online business. Mm -hmm. um, and so they saw, they saw how well we were doing. They kind of said, you guys run with it. Um, mm -hmm. our, plan, our, our deal was structured in a way that we were able to continue running the company as is. Our leadership stayed the same. Mm -hmm. Our team entirely stayed the same. In fact, we've only grown since. Wow. Um, so definitely under the Sleep Country umbrella, but mm. very much doing our own thing. And um, we really respect that, that they, as you know, the, the owner of our company, they see that we're winning and they mm. want to just continue to fuel that um, yeah. instead of being sort of a, a hurdle for our success. Yeah. So I will admit my wife and I bought our mattress, I want to say, man, I want to say four years ago from Sleep Country Canada, uh, Langley location. Um, so if I were to go, I, I haven't been in since, I haven't needed a new mattress, but if I was to go in now, would I see ND available in store? You would not. Okay. You would not. Yeah. So we are still very much in the e-commerce game first and sure. foremost. Uh, so we have some, we have a retail footprint. So yeah. we've partnered with Urban Barn Stores across Canada. Nice. Uh, so in, I think, more than 50 stores, yeah. you can go in and try out an ND mattress on, yeah. on the showroom floor. Uh, and we also have dozens of boutique partners across Canada as well, where you can go in and test the mattress. And all of that's listed mm -hmm. on our website. Um, but yeah, we've really focused on, on our online play. Yeah. Um, even in an urban barn, if you go and try it, you still need to purchase with us online. So it really is a pure play e-commerce strategy at this time um but yeah i mean we focused on our 100 night trial really communicating that to customers um and being there for them if for whatever reason they don't absolutely love the mattress we'll come and pick it up and and we'll make sure that wherever we can we'll donate it as well um so we've been lucky that our returns have been very low yeah. um but we're there for our customers and we just want to make it easy for them to get a better night's sleep so you pop on our website you order a mattress you know, depending on where you are in the country, an average of three to four days until it shows up at your front door. Um, and then you're sleeping sound and, and we have your back all throughout the process. No pun intended. Yeah, well, <laughs> or, or <literally laughs> say no pun intended. Yes, yes. Literally and figuratively, you have their backs. Um, you mentioned earlier influencer marketing. Um, really exciting thing happened this week. The new Canadian ad standards guide for influencer marketing came out um, just fresh off the press. Um, all sorts of stuff in there for influencers about standards as far as like, you know, how do you hashtag when it's sponsored and how do you clearly state that when it is a sponsor post, what's it been like for you just on, on the flip side, being a brand and, and reporting to the ownership group, how do you monitor attribution uh, of sales from influencers? Yeah. Well, speaking about the guidelines really quickly, yeah. I was yeah. very happy to see them yeah. come out, yeah. um, because they offer so much more clarity. Yes. So many more specific examples. Yes. I think a lot of people who were really in the game when they when they had read previous versions of this document, they sort of felt lost. Like there's yes. so there's so much vagary and you know, what's a gift, what's a sponsorship, what's yep. an endorsement, how do I disclose properly? Um, and it there the standards weren't particularly clear. Mm. Um, 
Whereas now they are, and I think they're very fair. Like we've, we're yeah. big into disclosure. We think, you know, as a proudly Canadian brand, being honest yeah. and transparent is really important to us. That means our partners, their reviews need to be honest mm -hmm. and transparent, but we also need to make sure that they're disclosed that they did receive the product for mm -hmm. free um, in exchange for their honest review. Yeah. So we're a fan of disclosure and I think the guideline will make it a lot, it will make it a fair playing field. Yeah. Um, because there's so much more clarity that here's what brands have to adhere to coast to coast. Yeah. Um, in terms of attribution, we've measured attribution a ton of different ways. Yeah. I think when we first, when I first got started building this program, we just, we had an inkling that influencer worked. We just didn't know how or how much. And, you know, mm -hmm. it was, we just needed to figure that out. Mm -hmm. So we started with things like promo codes. Nice. For all yep. of our influencers who joined our program, they would get a unique promo code and yep. we'd be able to track month over month who's performing, yep. who isn't converting and why. Um, there's a lot of issues with promo codes, one being that they leak. Um, mm -hmm. So not that we necessarily, you know, not not that it's a big deal if there's a 10% yep. code or whatever that's, that's leaking. The issue is just that we lose attribution. Yes. Um, so we aren't really able to measure influencers apples to apples or see which areas of the country are perform. It's just, it's all sort of lost. Um, so we, we've moved more toward um, a UTM or an affiliate link model yeah. where, you know, it's much less likely that a UTM link is going to leak yeah. um, as opposed to a promo code, which is so easy to copy and paste and put on a forum somewhere. Yeah. So that's really what we're doing. Um, and it's, it's giving us a lot more measurability. Um, but really, like, we just know, we've measured it for so long now that we just know it works. Yeah. And at a certain point with marketing, you know, like, look at a billboard, for example. Yeah. Marketers aren't sitting around the table every quarter being like, hmm, this is out of homework. Let's, let's yeah. make sure we're measuring it precisely. Like, there are things that we know. Like, there are things that in marketing we take for granted. We know that to a degree, billboards work for, for a purpose. So we don't need to always have this debate. It's it's the same thing now with influencer. An influencer to me is a lot like a digital billboard. Um, so we know it works. We don't need to be so obsessive about attribution to the same yeah. degree because um, we've seen it work and now we can just sort of iterate and scale. Totally. There's a, um, a woman from BC who was on the show The Bachelor and I think she's Bachelorette as well and now Dancing with the Stars, Caitlin Bristow. And so she's from BC, so I was following her for a bit. And she was talking about these blue uh, lens glasses. So not prescription, but would help you with kind of screen glare. And I was like, oh, I need one of those. And, and, and she was telling about like really affordable. It was through from X brand. And I was like, oh, I should get one of those. And so I eventually I remembered, I, I, and then I went to the website, and she had had a code on her, her post. But I went to the site, and I, and, but then if you sign up for an email, like you give them your email address, they'll give you a 10% off. Thing. So I was like, oh, I'll just use that. I didn't go back to try to find the code from Caitlin. So then right. I bought this pair of glasses because of that influence, but I definitely used the email signup code, not Caitlin's code. Absolutely. And, you know, the team of marketers behind this company, yeah. they're rejoicing that there's a sale, but they're trying to figure out what happened. And they're like, oh, it was our email. It yeah. was all email. And, yeah. and I think, I mean, maybe not. I don't I can't assume what they're thinking. But yeah, yeah, there has to be a level of understanding the customer journey. And, you know, measure as much as you can. Yeah. But at a certain point, you got to have faith too. You have to have faith that, you know, you're choosing the right partners, just like you yeah. have to have faith that you're putting a billboard in the right area of the city to reach the right people. Um, totally. Very, very similar models in terms of buying, in my yeah. opinion, in terms of the buying strategy. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's just, it's becoming entrenched as a clear channel that performs. And I yeah. think the team, the, the marketing orgs right now that aren't investing in it they're they're losing yeah and, and even and just to kind of kind of shift from there but but stay in this i i, I want to say stay in the same world but maybe you want to argue against that but um podcast marketing i kept hearing about this thing called blue apron this is early days uh you know malcolm gladwell talked about it and i was like oh i want to try this thing and i googled it because it's this meal yeah, a kit it comes with this meal and a kit i gotta make it but it's all the groceries and we didn't have it in canada so there's this thing called like chef's plate and I was like I guess I'll try chef's plate and I got hooked but it was like chef's plate at the time wasn't advertising on podcasts but thanks to blue apron I became a chef's plate uh customer yeah they were doing the top funnel heavy lifting for whatever company you decided to purchase from yeah. and it, that's how it goes like 
there's a lot of give and take in a competitive landscape. Like we yeah. know that if we're doing a big podcast ad or a TV yeah. ad, it's going to raise awareness in general about mattresses. And we hope that those customers will come to us to make their purchase. But Versus said company named after a friendly ghost, which we won't exactly, mention. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. But that's, that's the <laughs> risk that um, I think all, all brands take when it comes to top funnel awareness driving campaigns. But you got to do it or else you'll never get your, your name out there. I want to talk about explaining leads to clients. CallRail gives you the call tracking you need to measure the success of your marketing efforts in real time. Discover how many calls you received from your Google ads, organic searches, social media efforts, and so much more. And hey, that's not the only reason we use CallRail. CallRail seamlessly integrates all of our call and conversion data with over 700 marketing tools and platforms, including Google Analytics and Salesforce, for a deeper insight into what's happening. Start telling the complete story to your clients. Try a free trial today with callrail.com. And tell me a bit about what your knowledge is of what you guys are doing uh, indie wise on podcasts. Like, is it is it part yeah. of your mix? Are you are you seeing success with it? Podcast has been a part of our mix for a little while now. I'm not sure how heavily we're invested in it right now. Um, one thing that I think is really smart a way that about the way that Endy has organized its its marketing team mm -hmm. is that podcast fits under out of home. And I okay. think and I don't, Vers versus influencer versus influencer versus digital. Oh, I wow. think it's. I think it's brilliant because the reason why podcast advertising works isn't because there's a clear link to buy, isn't because it's easy attribution yeah. like it is with digital. Yes, there's an influencer element because you have a trusted yeah. voice speaking on behalf yeah. of the yeah. product, but really the capital of um, podcast advertising, just like out of home, is trust, right? Yes. So when yeah. you hear Andy on yeah. a podcast that's widely distributed, that yeah. you know all your friends are listening to, and it's Endy, that's a lot more trusted than just seeing a Facebook ad pop up. Yeah. Um, and and that's why it sort of fits within the out of home realm. Yeah. It's the same when um, Endy first got into uh, TTC ads here in Toronto. So that's on our on our transport transportation yeah. system. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we pretty much bought out like a significant chunk of the mm -hmm. TTC ads yeah. as part of our out of home buy it was our most significant out of home buy. Yeah. And you're on the subway and you see, you know, a bank and you yeah. see, um, you know, a huge legacy retailer yeah. and then you see Endy. And this was so early on in the game for us yeah. that that was such a huge step for us as a brand to build that trust with customers yeah. just through the association of being on the streetcar or on the subway alongside these respected, trusted, known entities. So podcast is very much the same and, and we really love podcasts. It's, it's definitely one of the hardest forms of marketing to have clear attribution, yes. but yeah. we're comfortable with that because we know it's a good risk. So Sarah, I don't know if you have a friends and family code or if you have a code that you can make public, but why don't you give us a little, maybe you don't have a code handy that you could give, but why don't you tell us what, do a quick little, like, what do you love about your Andy mattress? Do, show me yeah. what a good, like, micro podcast commercial could sound like. Oh man, I should have, I should have practiced, Darian. You're putting me on the spot. Um, well, Andy is the most comfortable mattress in Canada. Ships right to your door for free to every province. Uh, you get a hundred nights to try it out in your home. If you don't yep. absolutely love it, we'll come and pick it up and we'll donate to a, to a charity. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's a reason we're the market leader in Canada. It's one of those things that you really can't, you can't know a mattress is right for you until you've tried it. Yes. Right. Everyone likes something different, but we really think we've developed a mattress that has that perfect balance of comfort and support that when most Canadians lay on it, they're like, this is bliss. Yeah. Um, so I, I do highly recommend it. We we pretty much always have some sort of offer running. Perfect. Um, they cycle, but uh, check out ND.com and see what's there, what's going on, and and you you won't be disappointed. You can also sign up for our email for a discount Perfect. code as well. There's a little code. Going, yeah. and going if you, back and to if the attribution. Ask, how did you hear about it? And if they give you, uh, they may have some options. If they hear there's an open option, put Sarah uh, on a podcast because that could change her life and she might, you know, you know, get something cool for it, like a high five, you know, an air high five. Yeah. You know it. Yeah. Um, 
one of the ads that I saw you guys run, which I thought was, and I reference it quite often actually, is you were on a breakfast television show. I want to say in Toronto, like one of the breakfast television uh, Rogers, you know, segments. So I was like, oh, you're in the news. But then when I realized it was actually a Facebook ad of that said news segment. So I think you would, you would bid on the show and then it was an ad and it was like, try us here. And then the CTA was try us out. And I thought it was one of the most brilliant things because for me, when, you know, ND and these other brands came in the market, it was like, can I trust that? Do I want a mail order mattress? But then to see it on a news segment, I actually watched the news segment. I was intrigued by it. I was like, oh, this is legit. They're on the news. Yeah. Yeah. The BT segment was, I think, our first test to amplify an organic earned story. Yes. Um, and and it was great, right? It was a it was an engaging video of um, one of our influencers at the time talking about their ND mattress, why they love it, showing the box it comes yeah. in, yeah. Um, which yes. at the time was much larger, which is fun to yeah. watch now because yeah. we've just in innovated so much since mm -hmm. then. Um, but yeah, we it was that instant trust, right? Because even mm -hmm. if you didn't know ND at that time, that was prob probably in 2016, um, if you a year after we were founded. So if you didn't know Endy, you definitely knew Breakfast Television. Yeah. Um, and okay, it's a product that's on Breakfast Television. Again, it it must be it must be good. Like let's yeah. it's worth learning more about. So we piggybacked on the trust of Breakfast Television in that instance. Um, and in that specific example, like you said, mm -hmm. there was a CTA that drove to our website, mm -hmm. which every marketer wants to do. Like if they're spending dollars on an ad. They want to get people, they want, especially if it's a digital retailer, we want to get traffic back to our site. Um, but then we started testing and took things a little bit further than that uh, with our organic earned stories. So one great example is um, a story from a year ago, maybe now um, in Chatelaine, which hmm. compared Andy to yeah. one of our biggest competitors. Well, I, um, I found that article, I Google searched and found that article. It's like the number one thing that shows up organically SEO wise in Canada. It's the most yeah. amazing organic story. This was a yeah. journalist who just wanted to try out Andy, wanted to yeah. try out our competitor, yeah. wanted to share her experience and see yes. which one she personally liked better. And, and we Google ended up versus they love versus Google articles. loves versus and, yeah. and the, in the online mattress world, you don't know, you can't try out the mattress at home. You want to see what other people have to say. Of course. So this, article was amazing. It had photos. It was from Got the it. first person perspective. It really it talked about the delivery experience, the ordering experience, what it was like to unbox it, yeah. everything that a customer might want to know. And then it ended with a clearly definitive, Andy is my choice. <laughs> um, and we saw this and we were like, this story is oh, yeah. gold because it's yeah. authentic. It's real. It's from a trusted source. But the issue is, as we know, um, that readership of these publications is declining. Yeah. Right. Social media is on the rise. Mass media is falling. So we figured, like, how can we supplement this? Like, what can we do as a brand to make sure that people are seeing this beyond the news cycle? You know, yeah. not just the people yes. going to Chatelaine.com that afternoon, seeing it yeah. on the homepage and never seeing it again. So we actually created Facebook ads to and ads across, you know, other native platforms too to drive traffic to Chatelaine.com <laughs> to read this story. <laughs> which is so antithetical to how most marketers want to spend their ad budget, right? Like they want to get traffic to their site and they want mm -hmm. to see the immediate attribution. Yeah. Um, but we had faith that this answered yeah. every question that our customers want to know. Amazing. So yeah. So we drove a ton of traffic to shadowlane.com over the years and, you know, in the, in Facebook's back end, like in our ad manager, we're yeah. still able to see attribution tied to that ad. So somebody goes to that ad, within you know, 28 days, do they purchase or not compared yeah. to all of our other ads that are running. And even though we were driving traffic away from Andy.com, people were coming back at a much higher rate than our other ads to buy. So, so, so Sarah, I got to ask two questions. One, yeah. do you see that story or is that purely uh, natural? Like, did, had you, had it you was pitched? the result of organic pitching yes, and yeah. relationship building and just old school PR, yeah. but fully organic and earned. And then secondly, has Chatelaine sent your office flowers or chocolates yet to say thank you for all the traffic to our site? Not yet, but we're no. working on it. Because <laughs> that, that's, because in, in some senses, that's, that is the future. Like if a media organization does it well, like that makes so much sense, right? If they keep putting out great editorial that yeah. really tells a good report, you know, investigative journalistic approach. And I've, I've read the article, it's actually truly investigative journalism, right? I'm trying both. And, Here's my, you know, and they weren't like being 
agnostic to try to not hurt anyone's feelings. They were just like, here's my investigation. Here's my definitive answer. Yeah. It was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And the journalist said, like, I still enjoyed um, my Casper. Yeah, oh, of course. But... Yeah. Sorry, my phone was just ringing. You told me to turn off my notifications and here I am. Um, <laughs> Like the journalist said, I, yeah. I enjoyed both products, but ultimately Andy was the one for me. And and it was honest, it was fair, it ticked all the boxes. And yeah, I mean, PR has been huge for us. We've really yeah. we've we've really built and invested in our relationships with journalists across the country. Um, mm -hmm. my background is PR, so yeah. I just think relationships are tantamount to anything you do in marketing. Um, and that's just vital. It's core, it's core to who we are. So uh, two questions for you, kind of a connected there. What's kind of Andy's play, like, like 2021? Are you, are you going to see big changes? Are we going to see trends change? Like are you preparing for kind of anything new and, and, and crazy? And second with that, what, like, do we, are we seeing a shift in people needing mattresses? Is sleep and, and the understanding of sleep, like I think Ariana Huffington did an incredible job uh, with her book and with uh, Thrive Global talking about the importance of sleep. Are we, are we seeing a general shift in getting better sleep experiences? And again, will that, the first question, affect how you guys do marketing and trends and, and what you're up to? Yeah. Um, well, in terms of what we're looking forward to next year and beyond, we just want to keep growing. Nice. We want to continue to become a household name here in Canada. Yeah. We've seen our awareness grow exponentially over the past few years. And, and we know that we're just, we're on a good track. We want to see that yeah. continue because we know you know, the, the support and benefits that we can offer yeah. to Canadians who know who we are. So that's definitely our mission. Um, and we sleep has been top of mind for, for, you know, quite a while. I think yeah. we, we definitely see it brought up organ. I think people are just talking about it. People are thinking about it. Um, we're learning more about the ties and the links between sleep and mental health and yes. sleep and just general health and wellness. Yeah. Immunity. Um, yeah. immunity absolutely so yeah. if people can make a an, an investment that's you know isn't going to break the bank to to help their sleep improve yeah. like i think it's an easy decision for most people um but yeah i mean sleep is definitely top of mind i think especially right now people are spending more time at home than ever yes um, it's going to be a long winter yes and it's it's a lot of dark long nights yes and people want to wake up feeling as refreshed as they possibly can and and yeah. i think there's also um a lot of positive affinity towards towards supporting a, a canadian yeah. company um and where possible buying canadian made products so yeah our customers definitely um they get our mission like they mm. they just resonate so strongly with what we're trying to do in terms of building this homegrown canadian company helping canadians sleep better um, and they see how it aligns with what they want to get out of life. So Amazing. yeah, sleep is really very cool. much top of mind. And, and yeah, you may not know the answer off the top of your head, but like how often are you replacing a mattress? Is, is the average Canadian doing that? Or, and maybe how often should they be doing that is maybe the other question. Yeah, I mean, it really depends on what your mattress is looking like. Like if, yeah. if you have a clear dent in your mattress, like it's yeah. time for it to go, you're not going to sleep well. Yeah. Um, but most mattresses, I think people replace them between every you know, five and eight years. Okay. It seems to be getting shorter um, over time, but yeah. make sure that when you do buy, you buy with a company that has a really great warranty. Yeah. So, yeah, and also a company that's going to be around when your warranty is, you know, being offered, yeah. right? So, ND, we have a 10-year warranty. Wow. Um, we were purchased by Sleep Country. Yeah. We're not some, you know, yeah. startup operating yeah. out of a van somewhere. Yeah. Um, we are going to be here for our customers for the long haul. We've built a really sustainable business. So yeah. sometimes you'll see these mattress brands pop up where it's a brand you've never heard of. And they're like, we offer a 18 year warranty. And you're like, yeah. great. But like, will you be here in 18 years? Yeah. Maybe not. Um, so yeah, look into the warranty for sure. But I mean, really, if you're just not sleeping well, it might be worth the test um, yeah. just to see if, if a mattress change is, is good for you and it might help make the difference. It's awesome. And for you, I'm curious you know, to stay on trend and say what's happening in the news and media. What's your go to? Do you, do you use apps? Do you, do you get a physical newspaper? Do you, what are your ways of, to consume media and kind of stay on top of things? Yeah, I'm a huge news junkie uh, to the point of obsession, which is yeah. sometimes unhealthy. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm on Twitter all the time. Yeah. Twitter is really my main source. 
Yeah. Um, I think it's such a perfect intersection of what's going on in the news, also yeah. what's going on in the media. As someone who's in PR, I just love mm -hmm. to see what's going on in the Canadian media landscape. That's all found on Twitter. Yeah. Um, I am a huge fan of podcasts. So yeah. I listen to New York Times The Daily every day. Right. I'm a big fan of Front Burner and The Big Story, which are some great Canadian news podcasts as well. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm also a bit of a bookworm. So always reading something. Yeah. Um, when I can, sometimes it gets a little crazy. Yeah. But, but yeah, I'm, I, I could probably put a cap on how much news I'm consuming yes. for yes. my own good, but I, I can't, I can't seem to stop. You let me know if you find a way, Darius. Okay. I, I, you know, it's funny. I've actually recently gotten the Google news app on my phone and then I have an iPhone. So I've got the Apple news on kind of my widget there as well. I find them interesting to see what, I, I just love even the compare and contrast, what Google versus Apple is choosing to push forward and what, what is becoming trending on those respective uh, kind of like curated uh, tools, you could call it. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. But yes, yes. Um, and, and random fact, my wife and I still, we've, we've got four kiddos at home, but we've somehow figured out a way we will do, we get a physical Globe Mail sent to our house on Saturday mornings and, and we get it and we physically go through it. And, and by the, sometimes it takes a day, sometimes a, a whole week before we get through it all. But it, it's a really great thing. And, and I love every holiday. They always do the big crossword puzzle for, for us. I love people. that. Yeah. I love, there's something so important about reading a newspaper as a family. That's how yeah. I grew up. Right now I don't have a physical subscription, but um, I think when the time comes, when there's yeah. little ones running around, yes. a newspaper yes. is so vital. It just creates this instant connection and yeah. to have something tactical that you can feed and feel and read and connect yeah. with. Um, and I'm a huge fan of the Globe. I always, I grew up with the Globe every day too. Yeah. So nice. I love that and, you're doing that with your family. And great for pirate hats and um, bonfires. <laughs> So. Absolutely. And kindling. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, once yes. the day is done. Yes. You know, it's yes. going to be a cold winter. We're having some fire pits outside. It's going to be nice. Oh, man. I um, I love what you guys are doing. Uh, I'm so excited uh, seeing the growth and, and even having, yeah, uh, interviewed um, your company a few years ago on the show and just uh, before the Sleep Country acquisition and just kind of seeing the fire and energy and excitement. Um, in one of your co-founders was really awesome. But Sarah, it's so great to have you on the show. What you're doing is, is awesome. And I think a lot of brands can be following Endy and the way you're doing uh, influencer marketing and marketing in general here in Canada. Awesome, thanks Darian, it was so nice to chat. Yeah, well thanks everyone for joining us here on Marketing Jam and we'll see you next week on The Jam. Mm -hmm.